you would let Lionel Messi play in the women's national football team and destroy yeah, women's welcome. football forever. You'd let Usain I mean, it'd be Bolt. Very difficult Hang on. to get a ticket, on. which would, would suck. I want to do a little checklist here. You'd let Usain Bolt compete as a sprinter in the American women's Olympic team. Yes. Okay. You would yes. let uh, Floyd Mayweather compete as a boxer in the women's American boxing yeah. team. Yeah, you of are course a you have to be like the heavyweight. If you thought you'd seen all the craziness woke culture has to offer, think again. Piers Morgan has taken absurdity to new heights. In this video, Piers takes a wrecking ball to woke logic, leaving no topic untouched. Buckle up, it's going to be a wild ride. Because it really resonated with people, I think, rather like me, where, you know, I'm not right wing, uh, I'm not left wing, I'm kind of slightly center, I guess, politically about stuff. A liberal more than not, but I find this ultra woke mentality so illiberal that it borders on the very fascism they profess to hate most. So to see you go into the lion's den a bit with all these woke students, and actually what I thought was impressive about it, Constantine, was the way you didn't demonize them. Hmm. And maybe that is the way to, to progress and get this woke nonsense dealt with properly, is that you don't demonize them, you actually show them a better way. Pierce points out the obvious, claiming to lift women up, by trashing men is not only absurd, but also hypocritical. Emma Raducanu's success is backed by a support system that includes men, whether she acknowledges it or not. Empowering women doesn't mean pretending men don't exist. Of course, as we all know, the best way to improve the aspirations of women is by trashing men. And as Emma says, women don't need men at all. She certainly never needed any men, as far as we know, to get where she is today, except, well, a father, of course, who manages her career and, well, fathered her and then there are her five coaches who so far have all been male or max eisenbud her agent who apparently is very very good at maximizing her earning potential despite being a man and then a final twist of this dastardly tale of virtue signaling treachery it turns out the chairman chief executive and chief financial officer on hsbc's board of directors are all men too when it comes to the language police peers isn't buying it He's had enough of the erasure of gender-specific terms, like pregnant women. To peers, it's not inclusivity, it's erasing reality. Sometimes, a woman is just a woman. Here's Morgan, what say you? Oh, <laughs> and that says it all. <laughs> but we have 10 more Where do you even go? start? I mean, look, I would love to get pregnant. You know why pregnant women are the most popular people in the world? Everyone loves people who are pregnant. They're nice to you. I would oh be really gosh, popular, Cameron. right? But I would love to know, what should the post? How do I get pregnant? Because last time I checked, women get pregnant, not men. So when you say pregnant people, it doesn't include the billions of men. We can't get pregnant. <laughs> and this is, just goes back to what I was saying earlier about the eradication of any gender-specific language. It's tailoring to a tiny minority of people, and the vast majority of people would like to carry on being called by what they identify as. You ladies here, I presume, if you don't mind me calling you ladies, I presume you all identify as women. So if you were pregnant, you're a pregnant woman. You're not a pregnant person. And why should you be? It's so insulting, it's so insensitive, and it just flies again to my central point. Why are we letting this tiny group of people dictate how everybody else has to speak? When did our language get destroyed at the altar of woke political correctness? And who is going to stop it? I've got a clue for you. I've got a new show coming on Fox Station called Piers Morgan Uncensored, and I am going to lead the charge to save our language to let pregnant people go back to being called women. Pierce pushes the absurdity to its limits, asking his guest whether world-class male athletes should be allowed to dominate women's sports just by identifying as female. It's a brutal takedown of woke logic that exposes the real dangers to women's competition. Lionel Messi puts his hand up and says, actually, I'm feeling like a woman today. Do you play him in the American women's national team, Francesca? Yes or no? Lionel Messi, Lionel Messi. had to undergo an incredible <laughs> Yes or an no? Incredible, he had to undergo an incredible amount of treatment when he was young. He had a bunch of like. Would you allow uh, him to put his hand up? Say he's a woman to, for and him play to in the wo American grow, women's national team. Because he had a growth team. spurt. I'm a big Messi fan, so. But let me, let me just explain answer this to you. my question. Would you allow him, if he said I'm a woman, to play in the American well, women's national team? You're using the wrong pronoun. Yes, there. yes, Pierce. yes, right now. Hell yeah, are you kidding me? Wow. Messi on the US women's national team? 
Hell yeah. Would you allow Usain mean... Bolt to do that and, and, and be in the sprinting yes, team? Yes, because that would mean they're a trans woman. They identify as I women. I get it. I get you it. I agree. So just to be Transition. clear. Self-identification sounds harmless until it's used to exploit the system. Piers highlights the case of a male rapist who manipulated the system to enter a female prison, exposing the dangerous side of unchecked self-ID policies. Sometimes, it's not about identity, it's about keeping people safe. Why there is such an issue around... We've literally just seen a male rapist use that scam to get himself put into a female prison where he could attack vulnerable women inside a female prison when even his ex-wife said it was all a scam. Which is a terrible, very distressing, isolated incident. And I think it's easy to take that and say, that means that no, no, no one can identify as a woman. But and it's that's, not an isolated not fair. incident, though. But, but it, it's... it's 42% it's a... of, of trans-identifying prisoners in prison are in there for sex crimes. There's actually an advantage evidently to identifying as a female because they never identify as male because somehow male prisons seem less appealing to them. It's really weird. Anyway, but is it, that's is it, lim is it limitless, this self-identity? It, it, it's not totally limitless. What's the so limit? when, you're, when you're talking about International Women's Day, I don't know why we take the, the conversation around International Women's Day and make it about this. But if anyone there's is, so many benefits. Right, but if to anyone, according day, to you, can identify as a woman, anyone can, right? I, I don't see a problem with Just someone. literally put the hand up and say, I'm a woman. But it, it's not an easy thing to do to go out into Actually, the world. It's, it's easy. very easy. It's <laughs> easy. You might think it's easy to say, but to decide to do that, to say what this is doing who, it involved. Whatever that person decides, but to Does go out into the up? world and say I, I don't identify as perhaps the sex. So I was why born can't as, I identify? Not, okay, why can't I identify as a black lesbian? <laughs> well, firstly, I mean, it was. Well, I'm serious. Her. I'm serious. If I can identify as anything mm -hmm. without any need to prove I'm actually what that is. I, I Why think, can't I, on International Women's Day, say, I'm Piers Morgan, I'm a black lesbian? I think taking it to a kind of absurd no, status... No, I think, where I think we're that's talking what... talking about quite a, a With strong respect, I think change. that you've already opened the absurdity door by saying it is limitless. You can do what you like. Anyone can say, I'm a woman. So I simply ask you, why can't I? Piers draws a sharp contrast between pronoun debates in the West and the harsh realities faced by Ukrainians. It's not that pronouns don't matter, but Piers is here to remind us that maybe, just maybe, we need to keep things in perspective. Can you imagine going to Ukraine right now and saying to those people, do you feel disrespected, invalidated, dismissed, triggered, alienated, <laughs> or all of those things by the wrong pronoun? Why do you, you think we've lost our, our, our perspective on reality of what it feels like to actually be oppressed? It's not about being called the wrong pronoun. It's about being bombed by Russian barbarians. That is oppression. This is nonsense. Piers doesn't hold back when it comes to the body positivity movement. Celebrating self-love is fine, but ignoring the health risks of morbid obesity under the guise of body positivity? That's a step too far. Piers reminds us that health should be prioritized over superficial acceptance. She's on the cover of Cosmo and it's all celebrated. There's no mention of it being a dangerous way. Honestly, if you were really concerned about people being obese and, and representing something bad, you would take yourself off the air because you're not exactly slim yourself. Well, right? okay, I'm 220 Here's... pounds and I'm six foot one, right? You're five foot four and you're 380 pounds. So there is a difference. I'm not morbidly obese. Right, but you're still right? I'm actually fat reasonably too. healthy. You're still fat I'm reasonably too. fit. Well, you might think I'm fat. Most viewers are looking at okay. this and think they're not seeing me as morbidly obese, right? So I perfectly, you're perfectly entitled to throw the jibes but back at me. But you're still fat. You being less I'm not fat in Miley than Cyrus's me pop doesn't video. make... You know, I'm not in a pop video, am I? Extolling the virtues on TV. of my body. You're on TV. You're on TV every day. So you think that me you're sitting here now... You're on TV every now, day. You're you going think, to tell me that... You think, just to clarify, there is a comparison between me sitting here now, six foot one, 220 pounds, I am reflecting and celebrating a, a, a clinically dangerous level of weight, you think? I think that if you were really concerned about glorifying obesity, you would take yourself off the air. But I'm not obese. <laughs> it's just a statistical medical fact. You're fat, though. Piers humorously flips the script on militant vegans who storm steakhouse dinners to lecture people about meat consumption. Respecting each other's dietary choices seems like a pretty basic concept, but Piers is here to remind the world that it goes both ways. I'm going to start, Ryan, I'm going to start running into vegan restaurants. That's fine. I'm, Go for just it. just shouting that's your, that's and being right, annoying right and grabbing this. tables and so you can't eat your gruel. 
and just see how you lot like it. I'm, I'm going to go to your house and chop paint Piers. all over it. Piers. You've got a right to price. Oof! You've got me another one. Fan Stick it off your bingo. Cast it. Stick it <laughs> off your bingo, son. <laughs> but where's the salt? Where's where's it? Won't need any of this gruel. Fantastic. Just put that to one side, but I will have a bit of steak just to. You didn't salt it though. You see, all you've achieved <laughs> is you've made me want to do this. Just that's, eat that's lovely... absolutely fine. Mm. You go mm. for it. Mm. <laughs> mm. Do you know me, do you know how many steaks he's had from my restaurant? A <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot. Say what you want about Piers Morgan but the guy knows how to stir the pot. Whether you agree with him or not, his hot takes are impossible to ignore. If you laughed, nodded, or even yelled at your screen, hit that like button and subscribe for more. The silent majority just has got sick of it. They've got sick of everything they enjoy in life being redefined as somehow evil and corrupting and worthy of cancellation. They find the idea of the cancel culture completely ridiculous, but they also specifically like, Everything in their daily life that they enjoy, from comedy shows to movies to music to statues to heroes, whatever it is, the Woke Brigade's only response to all of it is it's all evil, it must all be cancelled, and we must go to a form of extreme puritanism where if you even crack a joke at work, you must be expunged from human life. In the end, it's not about who wins the argument. It's about keeping the conversation alive. So whether you're cheering Piers on or rolling your eyes, one thing's for sure. Piers Morgan isn't going anywhere. And this debate is just getting started.